Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on onespotmedia.com. The Legal Aid Council has requested that the minor charged following the death of a Bogwalk High student be placed in a facility suitable for minors. The request was made of the investigating officer in the matter. The 14 year old uh, minor, um, he was getting into custody by the police. But the Child Care and Protection Act prohibits minors being held at lockup where adults are held, even if they are held in separate quarters. So we had requested of the investigating officer to have him removed, and that was done yesterday morning. In the meantime, Executive Director of the Legal Aid Council, Hugh Faulkner, says they will ensure that proper legal representation is provided to the accused. Suspected offences would be murder and wounding with intent which are matters that would comment that the parish court but could proceed to the circuit court level. And the Legal Aid Council will ensure that they are properly represented by council and senior council at this, throughout the stage. Julian Bailey, the attorney representing Fabian Skirvin, who has been charged for the double murder of the Jamaican-Canadian couple in Retreat St. Thomas, has requested a psychiatric evaluation for her client. The request was made when the matter came up for mention in the parish court yesterday. In the meantime, a bail application was made for Skirvin's co-accused, Nekia Thompson, by her attorney. This was again refused as the Crown opposed the bail. Thompson and Skirvin were both remanded and are returned to return to court in the parish on July 5. They were charged with two counts of murder and robbery with aggravation. Skirvin and Thompson, who are from Seaforth in the parish, were picked up in February following investigations into the murder. Melbourne Flake, 81, and his 70-year-old wife, Etta, were found dead in, in their vacation home on January 9. Their bodies had signs of trauma. There was no sign of forced entry. Despite efforts by the Rural Agricultural Development Authority RADA to forge linkages between local farmers and buyers, there's still concern about the financial benefit to farmers. TVJ's Jillian Pearson explains. Shared prosperity, and I'm quite willing to say shared prosperity and progress. Executive Director of the Economic Growth Council, Senator Aubin Hill, calling for stronger linkages between hotels and small farmers in Jamaica. He was speaking on Wednesday at a conference and exhibition organized by the Manchester Chamber of Commerce. Senator Hill believes a greater level of respect should be shown to local farmers. Shared respect. A lot of what is happening with our farmers is because there is no respect. We don't value them. When I talk about the local farmers, in all true respect, I'm not talking about the people who are in the middle between the farmers and the hotel. I have nothing against the middlemen. I just want the farmers in Jamaica. Jamaican farmers must also get rich, not just a few people. They vote, they have children, and they help run this country. We must give them more and better respect. Mr. Hill further argued that inclusive economic growth must be Jamaica's priority in order to gain economic independence. This, he believes, can also help in the fight against crime. You cannot afford to pay for fighting crime unless you grow your economy. You're always going to beg people unless you grow your economy. We cannot afford to do that anymore. We must move from political independence to economic independence. Rich people, middle people, poor people, all of us must benefit from economic growth. More decent jobs, jobs. When people have jobs and they're working well and getting money, they don't have time to commit crimes. It's not the only thing that will solve crime, but it's a big solution. Jeline Pearson, TVJ News. The Development Bank of Jamaica, DBJ, has increased its allocation to micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. Minister Without Portfolio in the office of the Prime Minister, Dar Vaz, gave details in his sectoral presentation to Parliament. The DBJ will target support of over $27 billion in investments and over $8 billion in loan approvals. It will 
It will provide support to 220 new businesses and impact 940 MSMEs through capacity development initiatives. 5,500 new jobs are being target, targeted from these initiatives. Last fiscal year, the DBJ exceeded its $26 billion investment target by $6.9 billion, resulting in $32.9 billion in investments. The Electoral Commission of Jamaica says all is in place for Friday's by-election in the Homestead Division of St. Catherine South Central. Voting will take place in 33 polling stations across five voting locations. Polls open at 7 a.m. and will close at 5 p.m. There are 9,471 registered voters in the Homestead Division. The People's National Party PNP will be represented by Janet E. Grayson, while Mark Anthony McLean will run on the Jamaica Labour Party's JLP ticket. The by-election follows the death of Councillor Owen Palmer in a motor vehicle crash on March 4. State Minister in the Finance Ministry, Favel Williams, said the government is working on a plan to help Jamaica recover in the event of a natural disaster. With changes in weather patterns, disaster risk financing is important to Jamaica's economy. Technocrats have begun to analyze data to develop a policy framework for disaster risk financing. It will be amply consulted with local and international stakeholders. It will be based on the most recent specialized technical analysis available. In the end, we will have a portfolio, a suite of products for different levels of disaster, and a transparent investment plan to mitigate harm to people and damage to infrastructure. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, is this afternoon reporting that they are in control of the illegal dump sites in the parish of St. James. In a 2013 Jamaica Gleaner article, Deputy Mayor of Montego Bay, Michael Troop, had chided the NSWMA for failing to take steps to prosecute persons who are creating illegal dumps across the city. Speaking recently with the TVJ News, Western Regional Operations Manager at the NSWMA, Garnet Edmondson, says the illegal dump sites are now under control. If you traverse our town now, yeah, an example, a perfect example is a market era. You would see where we have transformed that illegal dump site. One, we have placed four skips in the market. That, that used to be a talk, it used to be a concern. No, it's no longer a concern. So a lot of these areas where we find that there are illegal dump sites, where we can do some amount of enforcement, we will. He, however, says some businesses in the resort town of Montego Bay are not carrying out their obligations as it pertains to the dumping of garbage. You don't see the dumping in the days, in the daytime. It is really night that they will come out with the garbage, put it out there. And through the tool, we cannot always be in every place, every time to, to prevent this. The Western Regional Solid Waste Manager says there is no need for persons to dump garbage on the streets as five trucks are scattered around the town centre on a daily basis. Every business in this town have that opportunity to deposit their waste when the truck arrives. Persons are just not obeying the laws as they are to. The National Water Commission, NWC, is warning that its new high-performance electronic meters currently being installed will result in higher water bills for some categories of consumers. It says in the long term, the meters should result in overall lower bills. NWC President Mark Barnett explains that this is because the meters are more accurate and efficient. The question arose following Tuesday's announcement that the Water Commission secured $15 billion from a bond floated by NCB Capital markets. The funds will be used to restructure a portion of its debts and carry out infrastructural projects. Low-income off-grid communities are to get solar PV kits. The initiative is spearheaded by the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica and 45 households will be targeted in the first phase. 
Energy Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley told the House of Representatives that 2,000 households should benefit from the project. In addition, 5,000 solar-powered lanterns will be distributed to replace candles. The amount of money spent on a kerosene lamp and the fuel to burn it for three months costs more than the price of a solar home lantern, Mr. Speaker. This solar home lantern, which is of course charged by the good old sunshine, is one of the most efficient off-grid lights. Mr. Speaker, it is bright enough for reading, working, or lighting up a small space and can last for a number of years. Dr. Wheatley adds that kerosene can harm the development of the young human brain. We must work as a government and as a parliament, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that there is no repeat of recent tragedies starring the kerosene lamp, where houses have been destroyed and the lives of our children lost. Every member of this house, Mr. Speaker, will agree with me when I say that our low-income Jamaican families deserve better. Business operators in the Spanish Town bus park in St. Catherine this morning protested the unfair treatment of the property owners as they were locked out of the premises by police. The workers say they do not know why the premises is closed. So, um, what was there any meeting to say why the police got to no, close? No, there was no meeting. No more than some. You see, the police come around. The police just um, come and say, the and from today we can't, we can't put out nothing. Operations Officer for St. Catherine North, Superintendent Ralford Hardy, is disputing the claims made that by the bus operators. That is not a unilateral decision. My management is arise from a meeting that we had and a consensus because we realized that the bus park was porous. The amount of entrance, exit, and that's why you find so many criminal activities taking place in the park. So in order to have better control, it was agreed that we will reduce some of those access points. And that is why management responded to what we suggested. It was not anything not done in secret, sir, because Mr. Lake as a responsibility those persons operate in a space and that is something we ask to be communicated it was not anything that we just got up overnight and did in news overseas president trump acknowledged for the first time that he repaid his lawyer michael cohen more than one hundred thousand dollars in 2017. the repayment was for expenses cohen incurred during the 2016 presidential election details from the cnn president trump not answering questions tonight mr president why did you Let's go. make your way out but conceding for the first time in a financial disclosure report, he repaid more than $100,000 to his personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, for expenses incurred during the 2016 presidential campaign. The financial disclosure form, released today from the Office of Government Ethics, revealed the payment to Cohen, who's now the subject of his own criminal investigation. The form did not explicitly say what the payment was for. But Cohen has acknowledged paying $130,000 to porn star Stormy Daniels to keep her from going public about her alleged affair with Trump. It appears to contradict what the president said last month. President, did you know about the $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels? The president did not disclose the payment last year in his financial report. The disclosure this year drew attention of the Ethics Office, which passed it along to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, who's supervising the Russia investigation. In a letter today, the acting director of the Ethics Office says, You may find the disclosure relevant to any inquiry you may be pursuing regarding the president's prior report. His letter to Rod Rosenstein is tantamount to a criminal referral. And that's because it would be a crime to knowingly and willfully omit any required information from a report. It's a nuisance payment. The president and his new lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, have struggled to give consistent answers to questions about the payment. You said he, 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 this was a regular arrangement he had with Michael Cohen. So did Michael Cohen make payments to other women for the president? I have no knowledge of that. Uh, but I, w I, w I would think if it was necessary, yes. He made payments for the president or he, he conducted business for the president. 
And that's the midday news. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the primetime news package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.